so today I want to take some time to make sure that you are aware of something that many of you may not be aware of. It's something called the ERC or the ERTC. The acronym both mean the same thing. It's Employee Retention Credit or Employee Retention Tax Credit. Now it's important that you understand that this is not a deduction. It's an actual refund check that you could apply for and receive funds up to $26,000 per employee. It's applicable to businesses that were able to maintain payroll, maintain their employees during COVID. Now, in this video day, we're going to talk about what you have to do to qualify for the ERC or ERTC. And I'm also going to give you some steps that I think you should take to make sure that you have all of the paperwork squared away and you're good to go when you fill out your application for your ERC or ERTC. So come on inside, sit back, relax and let's get down into the business. So now before we go any further, let's make sure that you and I are on the same sheet of music. Recently, there was a program called the PPP loan, Paycheck Protection Program by the government that gave businesses access to loans, loans that would eventually become forgivable loans, loans that you didn't have to pay back. The whole purpose of this program was to make sure that businesses were able to keep employees on payroll keep them employed during the pandemic. Now, of course, when you have what people think is free money, all of a sudden you had people that were making up businesses, just becoming business owners out of thin air, making up employees so they could get fraudulent access to these funds. What I want to warn you of is that this program, just like the PPP program has government oversight. And at some point, they're going to come back and check to make sure that you did the proper paperwork, that you actually have a legitimate business, that you have legitimate employees. And if you are legitimate, you don't have any problem. But when you do things and you know that you're not legitimate, you know that you don't have a business or employees, and then you go out and you file the paperwork and you receive money that you shouldn't receive, there will definitely be a price to pay. We can see that plan out in society right now with people who fraudulently access those funds. So make sure that you're doing the right thing. If you are eligible, then go ahead and get access to these funds but they could, because they definitely could help you in your business. But if you know you're not, don't waste your time. All right, so now who's eligible for the employee retention tax credit? I want you to know that I took this straight off the IRS website, right? So this is not something that I came up with. This is exactly what the IRS is telling us. And at the top of the page, it says, the Internal Revenue Service urges employers to take advantage of the newly extended employee retention tax credit. Then it goes on to tell us what the requirements are. It gives us a time frame. It says, Effective January 1, 2021, employers are eligible if they operate a trade or business during January 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2021. And they experience one or both of these events. It says, number one, you have a full or partial suspension of the operation of their trade or business during this period because of governmental orders limiting commerce, travel, or group meetings during the COVID-19, or a decline in gross receipts in a calendar quarter in 2021, where the gross receipts of that calendar quarter are less than 80% of the gross receipts in the same calendar quarter in 2019. To be eligible based on declining gross receipts in 2020, the gross receipts required were required to be less than 50%. Now for me, I'm not a tax guy. I'm not educated on tax law. I don't even know how to interpret what they're saying most of the times, which is why I hired a CPA. I have a CPA that works with me all the time. So when I saw that this was a possibility that I might be eligible for the ERC, the first thing that I did was send an email to my CPA. And when I sent the email, I just said, hey, can you give me an update on the ERC? I'm not quite sure how it works. Please let me know how it works. And he just sent me an email back saying that, hey, what we'll do is evaluate your income for 2019 through 2021 and see if you qualify and for how much. Now, from what I've been able to acquire so far from what I've read here on the IRS website is that if you receive the PPP loan, you can still qualify for the ERC. 
But it's also important to understand that if you are an independent contractor and you don't have any W-2 employees, you're not a W-2 employee, you don't qualify for the ERC. But I would highly, highly suggest that you talk to your CPA, talk to a tax professional to make sure you understand exactly how this works before you go out and try and receive funds or receive funds because you want to make sure that you don't get yourself into something that you can't get out of. And don't forget those of you who want the sweatshirt that I'm wearing today in this video, Entrepreneur Every Day, scroll to the bottom of this video, click the link, and cop your own. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you're interested in learning more about the freight brokerage business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's a five video series titled, How the Load Movement Process Works. And if you're interested in learning more about how we go out and acquire customers that we work with, I'll leave you a free video right here. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.